How's it going everyone? Welcome to this painting tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how I painted this Horus Heresy Death Guard Space Marine. This is going to be a very clean version of the Death Guard color scheme so that you can start with that and maybe you can add battle damage later and weathering. And I may do a different video for that but this is my interpretation of a Death Guard clean color scheme. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay after the video to know how you can support my channel. I'm going to start by getting a primed model, and this is very lightly primed with Rust-Oleum Gray Primer. You can use any primer that you like, I would recommend using white or very light gray. The first step is that I'm going to give the miniature a base with Rockart Flesh, and I'm going to use a flat brush. It, this is a size 2 flat brush from uh, Raphael and I'm very quickly adding layers not they're not very thin down because applying it like this uh, with uh, very quick layers and covering a lot of area it's very easy to cover the miniature fast and not leave any trails of crumbs and uh, brush strokes you have to be very careful though to uh, not have uh, any crumbs or dry paint on your palette when you're doing this and uh, or you can use a base coat brush and do it a little slower and more carefully. Next I'm going to do the same thing with Palette Witch Flesh to give the second coat. We're looking for uh, an off-white. This is a very close to white off-white for the base color and I'm using at least three coats for each step or four or even more in places where I missed. This is actually the the hardest step on this uh, miniature painting guide because you have to keep an eye on your brush and your paint uh, miniature so that you don't see any sort of debris or paint drying paint on the miniature. Next I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade and a fine detail brush to wash all of the recesses on the model. You have to go ahead and kind of wash only the area that is going to be in shadow which is uh, only the lines. and crevices of the model. In places that are very hidden, like in the backpack, you can go ahead and shade the whole thing. It won't matter that much because those places are in deep shadow and it won't show that much. So uh, just try to very carefully apply this color onto all of the crevices and be careful not to use too much. If you use too much, you can clean it up, but it's easier and you save more time if you do it correctly to start with. This is very similar to the way we painted that Beel 10 Guardian a while ago. And uh, it has a, a off -white, an off-white color. Uh, you can go even more off-white with a bone color if you like. But I kind of wanted to use a more warm, warm sort of a eggshell color instead. Next I'm going to use Pallid Witch Flesh again just to clean up those places where the wash go where we didn't want it. And to need the, the model a little bit more uh, just uh, we can push back the shade in places where we don't want it you, we, we can just push it back to the edges just cleaning up a little bit of the wash and that's pretty much it um, this step we're watering down the color a little bit uh, just to apply it more smoothly onto the model uh, the first two steps were a little bit watered down not too much just a little bit just to ma not make it just straight out of out of the pot, but not too much that it produces bubbles or it's very thin that it doesn't cover. Next I'm going to use White Scar and with this color I'm going to thin it down a little bit with drying retarder so that it stays wet a little bit longer and I'm going to edge highlight all of the edges of this model. It's just a little different, it doesn't catch too well with the uh, camera but if you you if you would see this model yourself you would see that there's a definite difference between the palette witch flesh and white and it looks very good on this color scheme I like it very much so uh, just take your time be patient and try to use the the edge of your brush whenever you can or you can just uh, freehand the edges on some parts and uh, just go over the whole miniature and that's pretty much it Next I'm going to use Castellan Green and this color I chose for the shoulder pads. This is a more military green and I was seriously debating in my head which color to choose. Uh, Death World Forest would be a very good color as well, but I decided to went to go with this one and I think it looks very cool. It complements the very 
white skin with a kind of darker color and uh, yeah just give it a layer of this color to the shoulder pads if it doesn't cover too well don't try to rush it give it a couple of coats and that's it here I'm using Abaddon Black and this color is going to go over all of the metallic areas and places that you would like to be black uh, this in this step we have to be very careful not to paint any of the white because it's very easy to mess it up and painting over black it's difficult so be very patient and careful if you do paint black over the white just uh, don't panic just uh, paint again with the palette witch flesh and the edges with scar white or white scars I should say uh, but uh, try to be careful try to minimize the amount of cleanup that you have to do and try to give these areas a solid coat Next I'm going to use Lead Belcher and with this color I'm going to paint all of the places that are going to be silver. This is a pretty standard, just a regular uh, dark steel color and I'm just uh, base coating all the areas with... Still my, I'm using a detail brush because I don't want to get in other places where I don't want this color to be. So I'm being very careful not to stain the white color of the miniature and just go around these places just painting them silver. This is how the model looks so far. I'm going to use Balthasar Gold next. And with this color I'm going to paint just little details here and there that we want to be gold. In this case it's just the skull on the front and the trimming on the shoulder pads and just a little uh, symbol on the back. I don't know what it is. But I just base coated those places uh, just very carefully. Try not to mess it up and uh, just clean up if you do any mistakes. Next I'm going to use Acrax Earthshade again and with this color I'm going to shade in all of the metallic areas and uh, including the gold and just the edges of the shoulder pads. just to give it that deep shadow that uh, separates one color from another. It's the same step as when we were using the white but in the shoulder pads and in the metal we are just giving it a wash with this color that it's gonna make it look dirty and old and it's gonna look good. Next I'm going to use Iron Breaker with this color is our highlight color for steel and we're going to edge highlight on the top of the exhausts behind the uh, in the backpack and also we're going to use it to edge highlight the rest of the metallic silver areas we're going we're doing a quick dry brush on the top of the of the exhaust just to give it a, a hint of highlight not really a strong highlight like in the edges and in places like behind the knees and in between the joints where you want to paint a metallic silver just uh, be very careful to use this uh, fine detail brush to uh, really carefully just paint a little hint of it on the very edge of the of the texture just to give it a little highlight you don't want to um, paint on the white and just try to be very careful next I'm going to use Eshin Grey to edge highlight the black this is pretty standard. Trying to use the edge of the brush as much as I can and uh, just give it an edge highlight to make the black pop or at least that you can see the the edge of the bolter from a distance. That's the whole purpose is the whole purpose of this uh, uh, edge highlighting. Next with downstone I'm going to give a final highlight to the bolter which is only on the edges that are most uh, sharp on the bolter and uh, very very thinly edge highlighting uh, so that a little bit of the ash and gray shows on the highlight. Next I'm going to highlight the gold with Gehenna's gold to start. This is going to go over the whole gold area, just leaving the deepest, darkest areas on the, I would say, the the parts of the sh gold shoulder pad that are not exposed to light. But it's pretty much most of it. Just uh, leave a little shadow on the lower parts of the shoulder pad where, where the gold is not seen uh, on, on the miniature. 
Next I'm going to use Auric Armor Gold to give the final highlight to the gold and this is going to be just a little hint on the very top part of the gold armor. The gold details of the armor, just uh, try to apply this on the places where you can see more reflection of light when you see the model uh, against the light. And I'm going to start with Corn Red, which is a very dark red for the base. And here I'm just trying to paint the whole lens on red. Next I'm going to use Evil Sun Scarlet, and with this color I'm trying to paint just the half front part of the eye. This is actually a little bit difficult, so if you are, you have to repeat it. I do it all the time, I don't get my eyes uh, looking well just at the first try. I have to use these layers a couple of times. And to finish it off I'm using Fire Dragon Bright, if not, I'm not mistaken. And this is going to the very uh, top spot on the front of the lens. Next I'm going to use a little dot of white. And if I can do it correctly on the screen, I don't think I did it w that well, but you can clean it up um, afterwards. Just put a little dot on the back of the lens so that you can have a reflection of light. And here is the finished model. Um, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. It was a little bit difficult to decide on the colors because uh, most of the work out there is has very different color schemes and they have very battered heavily weathered armors on Death Guard, so it was kind of hard to decide, but this is the color scheme that I came up with and I like it very much, and I'm still excited to try more Horus Heresy color schemes in the future. Thank you very much for watching the video, I hope you found it entertaining and helpful, and if you like it, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to see more videos. That really helps out the channel a lot, and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for watching my video and if you would like to further support my channel, you can become my Patreon on Patreon. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month and you are helping me create more and better content. If you can't, that's fine because you're helping my channel a lot just for watching and sharing, but you can read all of the details if you follow the link in the description below. I hope you can spare a dollar to make this hobby of mine a job for which I can get paid. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.